Thanks for the nice introduction. Also, hello from my side. Um, usually, I would say I'm happy to present here, but uh, quite frankly, I'm not. Uh, as you can see from the kind of ordered list of authors, uh, Fu Kang should have given the presentation. Um, however, his uh, visa process was kind of delayed, so we uh, lost our nerves and decided to send me instead. Um, now you have to deal with me, and uh, let's get through it together. Um, so why do we uh, look at RIPE MD160? Um, the primary two reasons why we look at it is uh, that it's quite old, it's a hash function proposed in 1996, and that it's standardized as part of an ISO international standard. Um, it's uh, hash functions uh, created in the 90s, so it uh, kind of uses the merkel damgard mode of operation uh, with a 160-bit state. Um, it has an ARX-based step update function, um, which is iterated for 80 steps, and um, to the best uh, of my knowledge, it's not broken yet, and it will not be broken after the presentation. So, um, let's go back to the 90s, to the area or time frame where RIPEMD has been designed. Um, so around the time RIPEMD 160 was designed, uh, a lot of other hash functions have been designed which uh, share some similarities uh, with each other. And if we look at attacks on these uh, 90 hash functions, um, then we see uh, that we have a set smiley for MD4, MD5, and MD1. Um, this means that we have uh, practical collisions for them. Um, as far as I know, for RIPE MD128, uh, there are only some theoretical um, non-ideal properties on the hash function. This is why I've drawn this uh, math smiley. So let's see how it's the state for RIPE MD160. Um, as I've told at the beginning, uh, RIPEMD160 has 80 steps. Uh, and if we look at pre-image attacks, uh, at most we can attack 31 steps. If we look at collision attacks and just focus on the compression function, um, we can do up to 48 steps when we do not start at the first step of the function. And we can do up to 40 steps if we start at the first step. And before this paper, for collision attacks on the hash function, um, the best attacks uh, covered 30 out of 80 steps with a rather high um, time complexity. And in this paper, we present collisions for round reduced versions reduced to 30 and 31 steps via practical examples and theoretical attacks for 33 and 34 steps. Um, as mentioned before, uh, RIPE-MD and almost all uh, hash functions from the 90s um, use the merkel damgard constructions, uh, which means that we have uh, chain compression functions. So the interesting part that uh, distinguishes these hash, and func uh, hash functions uh, happens in the compression function. Um, if we look at MD4, MD5, SHA-1, SHA-2, uh, the compression function kind of looks like this, so uh, we, it kind of resembles a block cipher with a white state and a large um, key schedule. So we have here the message expansion and the state update where the chaining value gets updated together with the feed forward. Um, if we look at RIPEMD, the situation gets more complex. Uh, so basically we have um, two state updates state functions and two message expansions which work at the same state and which are merged together at the end of the compression function. Um, as promised, uh, RIPEMD is an ARX uh, function, so within one step, um, one of the five uh, state words is updated uh, using modular additions, uh, rotations, and this bitwise boolean function which changes here um, depending on the current step we are in. Um, also, there is a constant addition, and uh, per step, um, one uh, word of the expanded uh, message is also added to the state. 
Um, so how do we find collisions for RIPEMD160? Basically, the high level idea of such a collision attack is almost unchanged uh, since 2005, and it was introduced by uh, Bang and Yu. So basically, um, we see the collision search as a differential problem, so we um, basically search for a message which has a difference and which ends up uh, in a collision. Uh, and this collision search also follows always the similar steps. So uh, at the first, in the first step, we search for a suitable differential characteristic. Um, those differential characteristic uh, usually has a dense part at the beginning and the sparse part. And we use the freedom as we can choose the message words freely in a collision attack. Um, to uh, find a solution for the dense part and to connect the dense part with the chaining variable. And the propagation of the sparse part is uh, done probabilistically. So what do we do now for RIPEMD160? Um, since the compression function is a bit more complex, um, how does the differential characteristic look like? Um, one option is to um, place a dense part in both branches of RIPEMD. Um, this has already been done by uh, several papers, but here, from my point of view, the problem is that we have to use the freedom in the message um, to basically solve the dense part in two branches, so um, the available degrees of freedom are consumed very rapidly, rapidly and typically um, if we do an attack following uh, this framework, we can only do uh, semi-freestyle collisions. Um, another option is to just uh, place the dense part on one branch, for instance the right branch, um, then the freedom in the message word, words are only used to solve the dense part uh, on one side and connect with the chaining value, and the rest of the characteristic is propagated uh, or solved by chance, basically. Um, this was done in the previous collision attack on round reduced RAPMD, and clearly there is also a third uh, option to put the dense part on the left. Um, in this paper, we looked at those two strategies and proposed uh, one where the left is sparse and the right is dense, and one where the left is dense and the right is sparse, and the one where the left is dense gives us the better attack. So we will have a closer look at this framework. Um, so let's start with the search for differential characteristics. Basically, um, we've used automatic techniques to search for the nonlinear part in the, in the characteristics, which is based on a long series of works, which always improved and added new tricks to these techniques. And the high-level idea of uh, these automated techniques is uh, basically a guess and determine attack, which means that we uh, start from a certain starting point, and then we do uh, guesses on the pit conditions, then we propagate information of this guess to other pit conditions, and if we have a contradiction, we backtrack and try to solve this issue. Um, so I think from this description, you might not know what I mean, so let's do an example. Um, so we exercise uh, through the rest of the presentation um, by the example of the third step collision attack. So what do you see here is um, basically the 30 state words or the, the respective state words which gets updated in each uh, step of the left branch. Um, then here we have the state word which gets updated in the respective step on the right branch and here we have uh, the differential description of the 16 message words we use in RIPEMD. And so per word, we have uh, 32 bit conditions, and each symbol here um, presents um, 
a pair of bits. So a dash means that in the differential description that this pair of bits has to be equal, so there's no difference, uh, which means that this pair of bits can take the values uh, 0, 0, or 1, 1. Um, if we have a 1, then we mean that those pair of bits has the value 1. If it has a 0, those pair of bits has the value 0. Um, with a u and an n, uh, differences are symbolized. Uh, one is the one zero pair, and the other one is the different pair, the uh, zero one pair. And a question mark means that we have not uh, refined the condition yet, so every assignment of the pair of bits is still possible. So um, from the starting point on, we are now searching for a differential characteristic. So how does this work? Um, let's fast forward to the end of the search, kind of. Um, so what we do in a guess and determine search, uh, we have here uh, still a lot of question marks and uh, undefined bit, pairs of bits. Uh, and we guess some of these bit conditions. For instance, uh, we guess here this question mark to a dash and then we propagate the information and see how we can refine other bit conditions since every bit is connected via functions in RIPMD. And we see that we can propagate a bunch of information. Then we guess the next bit, for instance, um, here, this question mark, and then we propagate again. Then we guess another bit, and then we propagate again. And what you can see here is that for this guess, we have a contradiction. So uh, this differential characteristic does not work out. So we have to backtrack, which means we have to go back to a state where we didn't have or couldn't um, notice the contradiction and try to resolve it. So in this case here, instead of guessing a dash, we guess an x, which means a difference and then we propagate again the effects, then we guess the last question mark, propagate again, to end up with our differential characteristic. Now, in the next step, we have to search for a pair of message words which follow these characteristics. Um, this is done in four steps. Uh, in the first step, we find a solution for the dense part of the differential characteristics by consuming the degrees of freedom in the red message words here. Uh, in the second step, we then uh, compute one step forward by guessing M3. Then we um, aim to connect um, the dense part from the beginning in step three. And in step four, we uh, see if the conditions of the rest of the characteristics are fulfilled. So let's start with step one. So basically what we do here is we refine the conditions uh, more and compute the corresponding message word to this refinement. So we do it and we consume more degrees of freedom uh, until we have um, determined our starting point from word 11 to 23. Um, if we take a closer look here, uh, we see that for the connection then, uh, we might have a problem since um, the degrees of freedom M13 and M10 are already used. Um, so we have to find a solution for this, for the later connecting step. And the first part of the solution is that we compute the solution set of X9 and X10 uh, which fulfills this equation for the state word x14 uh, with the given m13. So then we are at step two. Basically, we just guess uh, the word m3 and compute one step forward. Um, then we uh, start the connection phase and try to connect from the beginning. Um, how do we do this? Uh, we randomly choose uh, the, those three message words, and then we can, uh, after we have chosen those message words, we can compute till uh, step eight. Um, then we have to connect, um, which basically uh, means that we calculate this variable, um, 
by, with the help of the equation involving the message word m10. Um, and here we find the solution for x9 and x10, uh, with where the xor, yes? Oh, okay. <laughs> where the xor corresponds to this uh, variable. Uh, and if we found uh, such a solution, we can compute the message words m8, m9, um, m11, m12, and m14, and achieve a connection. So basically, we'll fill in here a solution, um, which gives us the rest of the five uh, not determined message, message words. And then um, we can attempt to propagate the rest of the characteristics and see if we have a contradiction or if it works out. And since this is a staged example, um, it works out and gives us the um, solution for the uh, 30 step collision. Um, but usually it doesn't work out. What do you do then? Then you go uh, to step two again and try for another choice of those message, message words. Um, there is a follow-up work, uh, which is presented at FSE 2020, and hopefully um, this time it will be presented by Fukang. So thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you very much. Is there any questions? Uh, it's uh, semi-free start collisions. Basically, I already had them in the in the table. I can show you the results if you don't want to go to FSE for some reason. So, basically, um, those. This, do these techniques apply to other hash functions as well? Um, um, the the, the high-level strategy, yes. Uh, yeah. But there's, is there more examples for these these um, parallel hash functions? Uh, not that I know. Okay. Actually. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.